are doing a, uh, a adult buck survival project down here in Sussex County. We're uh, focus areas, uh, Milton area of the state. Uh, we're trying to capture button bucks, so males that were born last spring. We're putting radio collars on these individuals and tracking their movements and survival and home range estimates uh, through three and a half and two and a half years of age, depending on when we capture them. This is a five year project involving the University of Delaware. There are partners in this project that we're doing. We're here at a drop net. So this is a 70 by 70 foot net, obviously suspended at each corner um, on poles. So the way it works um, that one squirrely tree right there it's a silver kind of thing off to the side of the tree that's our tree stand over there so the way it works th this is a mechanical net these are all mechanical triggers that are all wired together using electric fence wire so all four triggers are all tied into one unit with by this wire and then the biologist will be up in the tree waiting for the deer to come over come under the net most of our captures are done at night so we're using night vision to see the deer come under and then once the deer are in the center of the net, we have a cable that comes off that we yank on that then opens up all these triggers and causes the net to fall down on top of the deer. And then we rush in and we provide immobilization drugs to basically sedate, you know, calm the animals down, put them to sleep. Um, and then we put radio collars on our button bucks if that's our target animal we've captured. All the deer will get numbered ear tags, so they're all uniquely numbered. Uh, we do take some body measurements that help us determine the size of the animal, um, you know, body weight of that animal by taking, you know, nose to tail length and some uh, leg measurements and around the girth and stuff so we can get an estimated body weight of that captured animal. We do try and age the animals if they're, you know, obviously if it's a button buck, it's going to be six months old, but anything older than that, we'll try and, you know, examine their teeth and get an approximate age sometimes. And then we have a, a different drug, another drug that we would give to that animal to wake he or she back up if we caught bucks or does and they go off on their way wearing a radio collar if it was a button buck or, you know, ear tags if it was any other deer. So it's going to provide really meaningful data for us with survival of each age class of males. Uh, the collars will stay on the deer, so unless they're harvested by a hunter or something like that, we'll determine how many get harvested by hunters, survival rate estimates, and you know, unfortunately how many get hit by cars. We'll learn about roadkill uh, mortality causes and rates of those. Uh, we've done a completed a similar project involving adult does that wrapped up a couple years ago. So we've already researched that segment of the population and now we're focusing on the males. We hope to determine uh, uh, home range estimates, sizes of bucks, you know, home ranges of how big the area is that a deer lives in. Home range is where the deer finds its food, water, and shelter. The information is important from um, management of hunter harvest opportunities, so understanding you know, how many of a deer of an, of an age class are going to be harvested by hunters, how many are surviving to older age classes if hunters are interested in trying to promote more older bucks on their properties and stuff will determine, you know, what level hunter harvest is contributing to a buck mortality. Home range sizes will help land managers who are trying to manage for deer to know how much area they need, you know, how much does a deer, does a buck have a 300 acre home range of 400, you know, we're not sure, we'll figure that out now to know how much property you need in order to encompass a deer's home range. Um, so a lot of, you know, and you know, the disease factors and roadkill stuff, you know, what level of mortality our population is succumbing to that. Obviously we know how many deer are shot by hunters because they report those harvests, but things like disease and roadkill collisions and stuff we don't know because many of those are, they're not reported, there's nobody telling us when that happens. So projects like this will provide information to those aspects. The white-tailed deer is doing very well. Um, last year's deer harvest was our third all-time highest harvest. Um, 14,263 deer, so hunters had a successful year. Um, this area of the state, you know, folks may have been, you know, recall the epizootic hemorrhagic disease outbreak we had, EHD, some folks refer to it as blue tongue, but the proper name would be EHD. Um, that, based on this past season's harvest information and stuff, it definitely shows that the population is starting to recover in these areas from that, but across the state the population is doing well. Uh, but it's studies like this that will provide that detailed information to give us a better idea on what's going on with Delaware's deer population.